I, I can't even pretend to imagine or think that I know the situation that each person in here is currently in, the condition of your heart, your understanding or your relationship with God. I can't even pretend like I have any idea or know what each and every one of you is going through. But I'm certain each and every one of you has recognized that this world is filled with pain, difficulty, challenges. Sometimes you might even find yourself asking, why is life like this? Why is life like this? Betrayal, lying, stealing, murder, name calling, slander, death. Why is life like this? Through our set, we've sang a lot of songs about how good God is. And there might seem to be an inconsistency between a good God and a suffering world. What is the connection? Often in our songs, we praise God as the creator. He is the God who gave life. Each one of you has life because God gave it to you. Amen. He created the sun. He created the moon. He created the planets. He's God. In the beginning, there was God. You weren't there. I wasn't there. God was there. And he created. And he's a good God. He's a good God. So what's up with the world that we live in? What's up with it? The issue is, is that from the very beginning, mankind deceived has rebelled against God. We have chosen our own way. And the Bible defines this as sin. So often we think of sin as that one time we did that one thing we know we shouldn't have done. But the problem of sin is much more severe and much deeper. Sin is a condition of the heart, an infection, a disease, and it leads to death. Not just physical death, as we all know, everyone eventually dies, but it is spiritual death. That is separation from God. Why would sin lead to separation from God? Because God is holy. Everything about him is good. Nothing about him is bad. Everything about him is right. Nothing about him is wrong. And our sin is an offense to his holiness. It's a rejection of God as our creator. And sin leads to death. We talked about it in the size of sin. So often we minimize the problem of sin. We think, well, yeah, I know I'm not perfect. But overall, I'm a pretty good person. We become our own standard and we judge the world and we view ourselves as righteous in comparison to the surrounding wickedness. But the reality is, is that we are a participant and a contributor to the wickedness in the world in which we live. Our hearts are far darker than we often imagine and our need is far more desperate than we are capable of comprehending. Mm -hmm. We, because of our sin, have not earned blessing from God, have not earned favor from God, have not earned love from God or acceptance from God. In our sin, we have earned <coughs> judgment. We have earned judgment. It's the bad news of the gospel. It's the bad news of the gospel that sinners in and of themselves have no hope 
of creating their own pathway through their sin back to God. Sinners have no hope in making their own way back into the good graces of God. And yet God, seeing our desperate condition, acted on our behalf by sending his son, Jesus Christ, to walk on earth, fully God and fully man. And as a substitute for mankind, as one who came to stand in our place, Jesus perfectly obeyed God in every way. He was tempted, and yet he was without sin. He was without sin. And the reason this is good news is because though Jesus was without sin, since he lived his life in perfect obedience to God, he had earned acceptance with God. And he took that life. And it was nailed to the cross. And at the time, it seemed like a, some kind of terrible defeat. Many of the followers of Jesus thought at that time that he was coming to reign as king. To see him crucified on a cross is not what they expected to see. It seemed like a defeat. But Jesus said, no one takes my life from me. I lay it down of my own accord. It was the purpose for which Jesus came, not only to live the righteous life that we failed to live, but also to die the death that we deserve to die. On the cross, Jesus took upon himself the punishment that our sins deserved. And on the cross, he died. He was buried and yet three days later, he rose from the grave. Amen. Now, why is the resurrection something which believers shout hallelujah when they hear it? Because when God rose Jesus from the grave, it was proof that God accepted the payment for our sins. Amen. And as Jesus rose from the grave, he appeared to many of his disciples and eventually ascended into heaven where now he rules and reigns as the Lord of all lords, king of all kings, name above every name. Jesus Christ, the eternal one who came and died to save sinners. This is good news, but it is only good news for those who believe. God has called all people everywhere to repent, to turn from their sin and to turn to Jesus Christ as their only hope for salvation and a right standing with God. And God has fixed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. And the man he is appointed as that judge is the one who has risen from the grave. Jesus Christ, there are two ways to know him. To know him as Savior or to know him as judge. He is holy. He is coming back. And when it comes to the message of Jesus Christ, I want every person here to hear this. There is no such thing as a neutral response. There is no such thing as indifference towards Jesus Christ. You either embrace him as Lord and Savior or you reject him. Either you say, Jesus, clean me of my sins, or you say, I'll try and find another way. Either you say, God, accept me on the basis and merits of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, or you say, I think I can do it on my own. There's only two ways to respond to Jesus. In faith and repentance, or in rejection. And so the gospel is made clear tonight that if you are here, you would not consider yourself a Christian 
You would not consider yourself as one who follows Jesus Christ, who is trusting him alone for your salvation. The gospel is declared that you might right this very moment say, I believe now. I believe now. See, the good news about the gospel is that because it is based on Jesus' work and not ours, that means that anyone, regardless of their social class or ethnic class, regardless of their race or culture, regardless of their upbringing, regardless of where they're from, regardless of the sins they've committed, anyone who turns from their sin and turns to Jesus can be saved. You are not too far gone. That is the good news of the gospel. But if you turn away from him, God has fixed a day when Jesus will judge the world in righteousness. Our only hope to be saved from the coming judgment is to run to God, to trust in Jesus for our salvation. Um, man, uh, for the believers here, it is our, our hope and uh, our prayer that tonight would be an encouragement for you in your faith. That um, hearing the gospel declared boldly, that singing along the songs would, would build you up and encourage you in your walk. We as Beautiful Eulogy, we do not think that music could ever be an adequate substitute for the local church. And so if you, if you uh, claim to be a Christian and yet you hate the church, I want to remind you tonight that Jesus laid down his life for the church. Amen. The sacrifice of Jesus Christ is bringing together a new family in him from every race, nation, and tongue. And we will be made one together through Jesus Christ and live in God's presence for all of eternity with no more sin, no more pain, and no more death. And while we await for that, the coming of that great hope, we unite together in local churches to be built up in our faith, to submit ourselves to the teaching of the scriptures, to serve one another, and to go out into the world and declare the gospel. Amen. We would like to do one more song if that's cool, y'all. All right, this song is called Satellite Pipe.